I got tested again and to my surprise, my AMH had gone up seven times. Hello ladies, my name is Helen and I started this channel so that I can talk about my IVF experience abroad in Korea last year. And I'm actually still in the middle of all of it. I still haven't done my transfer yet, but I dedicated all of 2023 to getting back-to-back -back IVF egg retrievals. I am 40 years old and I have diminished ovarian reserve which basically means that I have a much lower egg count than other women my age. So I dedicated all of last year to getting IVF and making sure that I give myself a chance to have not just one kid, but hopefully two kids. The reason why I traveled to Korea is because it's incredibly efficient there, both treatment-wise as well as cost, and so that's the reason I went back. On top of that, I am originally from Korea and so, you know, it just makes sense for me to go back there. And also the government helps to finance a lot of the IVF treatments. If you clicked on this video, then you probably know what AMH already is. It's the hormone that indicates how many eggs that you have left in your reserve. You probably already also know that if you have a low AMH like me, my AMH is almost non-existent. It's 0.06. You probably will need more than one cycle. And you really just kind of have to wrap your head around the idea that IVF is going to be a longer term thing than for it is for other women. So yeah, I have dedicated all of 2023 to making sure that I give myself the best chance I've completed seven egg retrievals at this point, and that happened between February and November, so a very long period of time. And during that period, actually, my AMH has gone up 7x. So a normal AMH level for my age would be one. But before I started IVF, my levels were basically zero. If you're interested in knowing the average for your age, then I'll link where I found this information. Okay, let me give you a rundown of my AMH history. So September 2021 was when I first tested. This was the first time that I ever even thought to test for anything. I wish that somebody had told me a little bit earlier about fertility and educated me a little better about it because I just was not, I don't know if I wasn't interested. I don't think I was interested. I just, it just wasn't something that occurred to me. I just thought it was so easy to get pregnant. I've seen a lot of women my age get pregnant. I think I really took it for granted. Anyway, I just happened to be in Korea. I knew that the fertility clinics in Korea were great. And so I just stopped by one and took a test, uh, just some blood work and had an ultrasound. They saw, I believe, six follicles or, or more, or six or seven follicles during that, that time. And my AMH level at that time was 0 0.64, which is also actually very low, but I, didn't even realize that it was that low. I just thought that it was slightly lower than other people and it was fine. Fast forward to March, 2022. And this is when I turned 39 and I actually tested with uh, Modern Fertility, which is an at-home test kit that you can order. And you just prick your finger and drop a few drops of blood on a strip and then you dry it and then you mail it into the lab and then they come back with the results within a week or two. I signed in online and I checked to see what my results were. They not only test uh, for AMH, but other fertility hormones as well. I, I could see that my AMH went down slightly from 0 0.64 to 0 0.54. And this was in the span of six months. 
But Modern Fertility said basically that my AMH was only slightly lower than other women my age. So I still was not worried at this point. Now, in retrospect, I kind of think that Modern Fertility was a little bit too positive. I wish that somebody would have rang the alarm, go get help now, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, in August 2022, that's when I had a natural pregnancy and I miscarried at seven weeks. That used to be really hard to talk about, but now I feel like a lot of time has gone by and I feel a lot more comfortable talking about it now. But at the time, I was so devastated. I really thought that, oh wow, I'm gonna be a mom. I look back and I realize that having this pregnancy has given me the desire to really want to become a mom. And I've just come to realize how precious life is. You can say that the maternal instinct became real during this time. Anyway, when I had my miscarriage, I had my levels checked again. This time I was with Kaiser, who was my new provider, and I had some blood work done to show that my AMH had gone down yet again from 0.54 to 0.34. I don't know what's up with all the fours at the end. That's when I realized that this is really urgent. My AMH just keeps falling super fast and so I knew that I needed to take action. February 2023, a few months later, I, I think this was like six or seven months later actually, I went to Korea with the goal of staying there for a few months um, to get IVF and hopefully come back to the States pregnant. Before we started treatments, I had to do all the tests all over again at that clinic. I got my blood work done and my AMH had fallen literally to nothingness. That's when I found out that my AMH was 0.06. The decline was real. My doctor, who is actually really one of the most famous doctors in Korea, and he has a lot of experience with women who are of advanced maternal age and who have diminished ovarian reserve. He was in shock and he, he was just kind of like disheartened by this number. I think I was one of the lowest that he's seen. So he was just like, I don't know how it's even possible to have hope at this point, but we can just, you know, give it a go. The great thing about Korea is that they won't turn you away and they won't turn you away or reject you because it will lower their success rates for their marketing purposes, which some doctors seem to do in the States. And I just don't think that's, <laughs> I just don't think that's very, that's a very good practice. There are definitely a lot of pros and cons when it comes to getting IVF in Korea, but I would say that the fact that they don't turn people away based on their BMI or their AMH levels. It's something that I'm really, really grateful about. So starting February, 2023, I started my IVF treatments and I had monthly retrievals, basically. Once in a while, I would take a break between. So September, 2023, I finished egg retrieval five and before starting six, I got tested again, and to my surprise, my AMH had gone up seven times. Now, mind you, seven times from 0 0.06 is not that much. It's still extremely low. It's 0 0.4, um, but we're still minus one zero at this point, so it's reason to celebrate for me. So AMH goes up and down regularly, but usually it goes down for women who are of advanced maternal age pretty quickly. So basically after 25, it goes down steadily. After 30, it's a steady decline. And then after 35, it's like 
<laughs> it also depends on your condition. If you're super tired or sick during the time that you get your blood work done, then your AMH is more likely to be lower. I don't know for sure what made my AMH go up, but I do suspect a few different things. I get this question a lot, actually. First of all, I was getting fertility treatments. I was getting IVF, and so uh, I'm sure the medication had something to do with it. But also, I had changed my entire diet for that whole year. I gave up most processed foods and stuck to whole foods. I gave up refined sugar. I gave up flour, except for whole wheat flour. White rice, dairy, basically anything white. I also stuck to as much organic food as possible. I only ate red meat twice a week. I ate lots of fish and vegetables and, you know, fruits. I also stayed away from plastic. I tried my best. It's really hard when you're living outside of your own home for that long and I don't know, that was really a bit of a challenge, but I, I tried at least not to use plastic with hot foods. Most of the time I just didn't use plastic at all. Lastly, I was taking supplements consistently that entire time. I'm honestly not sure if this had an impact, but it was just part of what I was doing. I did make a video about that and listed all the supplements that I am taking, so I will link that here. On top of all of the supplements that I was taking on in that video, I started taking a few other supplements, including NAD+, resveratrol, and uh, myo-inositol. I had started taking these supplements a couple months, a month or two prior to having my blood tested again. Exercise. I was only doing a lot of a lot, like light exercise. I was told not to do anything strenuous or start anything super new. And so I did some yoga a few times out of the week. I went for long walks, like an hour every day, if you can believe it. Also, this is just my feeling on it, but after a, a summer of not being with my husband, he came to visit me and I was just happier and more relaxed and maybe that had something to do with it. I just finished and, oh my God, I'm so dizzy. But we got five eggs. So after my AMH test, I had my sixth retrieval. And this actually ended up being my most successful retrieval. It resulted in five mature eggs and three embryos. Two of them were five day or day five blastocysts and one of them was a day four morula. All average grades, so none of them are like fantastic looking, but still we were so thankful and just over the moon. Now after round six, I decided to just do one more round just because my plane ticket was like a month later and I just had the time, so why not? Honestly, for round seven, I kind of let myself go. I ate whatever I wanted. I went out and had fun and, you know, I drank wine. I just did whatever I felt like. Quite frankly, I was pretty much done. I ended up getting three eggs that cycle and one four day or day four morula. That's kind of confusing. Day four morula. My hospital, they allow the embryo to grow as long as they can. They try to cultivate the embryos as long as they're holding steady. And once they start to kind of slow down a little bit, that's when they freeze them. So that's the reason why I have several day fours. Um, from my seven retrievals, I was able to get nine embryos, two of which I had to toss because they tested abnormal, but the rest of them are untested. I can't believe that I did that many retrievals. That's so insane. So that makes a grand total of seven 
embryos. I actually came back to the States, back home to just kind of chill and relax for the holidays and just be with my husband for a little bit. I am going back to Korea next month for the transfer and so I'll keep you guys posted. If you have any advice on what to do before the transfer to prep your body or just get your mental state right before the transfer, um, I would love to hear it in the comments. Well, that's it for updates. And uh, if you want to see my story from the very beginning, I'll link my first video. Thank you guys so much for being on this ride with me. Do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to my channel. and. Hopefully share this video with somebody that you know that might need it. Baby dust to everyone. Bye.